the high water mark of Persian Safavid culture coincided with the reign of Shah Abbas I. One of the notable urban projects would be the Siose Pole, or 33 arch bridge in Isfahan from 1602. Despite the fact that now many of the building materials were mediocre, a majority of the projects, which could include landscape features, dikes and gardens, were designed to make the city more beautiful. Especially the changing light situation, depending on the time of day, contributes to the amusement and relaxing properties of these structures. The Shah Maidan, or public plaza, is an 8 hectare space constructed in Isfahan under Shah Abbas I between 1590 and 1595 for state ceremonies and sport, such as polo games. A two-storied, arcaded perimeter of stores was added by 1602 in an effort to introduce commerce to the area. The arcaded facades were originally decorated with polychrome glazed tiles. The rhythm of the arcades is broken once on each facade by the entrance to a landmark building. On the south, the Shah Mosque. On the east, the Mosque of Sheikh Lutfala and the Ali Kapu on the west facade. On the north is a monumental entrance portal into a two-kilometer bazaar, which links the Maidan to the old city. The Iwan of this grand portal, known as the Nakara Khana, crowned with the representation of Sagittarius in mosaic tile, leads to the Royal Bazaar, the Royal Mint and the Royal Caravanserai. One focal point of the Maidan is the facade of the Sheikh Lutfala, the private oratory of Shah Abbas. A huge frame of arcades housed shops and at the back opened up to a long gallery forming the actual bazaar. The arcades on the upper level are often empty and act as a backdrop for the theatrical importance of the entire space. From the terrace of the Ali Kapu Palace from 1612 to 1638 an extraordinary panorama unfolds over the Shah Mosque and the Maidane Shah. It becomes clear that each feature of the Maidan was considered in relation to the others. Behind the buildings rises the mountain range that delivers the water to the town of Isfahan. The Ali Kapu was the seat of the government. The building has seven levels and is equipped with a lofty portico called a talar with slender wooden columns. About 200 guests could be hosted here to follow festivities, polo games or simply admire the vast gardens on the opposite bank of the river. The music room in the Ali Kapu has a very special kind of decoration. The hollow of the vaulting features cutouts in the shape of bottles, vases, or musical instruments that serve as a sound box during banquets. These acoustic features contribute to the refined elegance of the room. Smaller rooms lead off this main space, intended for more discreet meetings. Some of them still have wall paintings that survive. The Sheikh Lutfala Mosque from 1601 to 1618 is opposite of the Ali Kapu. It is an unpretentious mosque of modest dimensions. Shah Abbas constructed it in honor of his father-in-law, Sheikh Lutfala. It lacks a minaret and a pishtak and has a low-profile single-shell dome with a superb colored brick decoration in arabesque designs. The mosque is off-axis 
to line up correctly with the direction of Mecca. The interior is characterized by delicately filtered light entering through the alabaster screens. It is reflected off the brilliant surfaces that are covered with intricate tile decoration. The building is a squinch construction that supports an octagon, which in turn is the base for the dome. The calligraphy is the work of Ali Reza, the finest calligrapher of the time. The Shah Mosque or Masjid is Shah has a courtyard with a four Iwan appearance. Not only the octagonal vestibule, but also the lofty vaults and the two minarets are covered with exquisite decoration that is reminiscent of the Turkmen period. Shah Abbas wanted to turn his capital into the most beautiful in the world, and his mosque had to be the most precious flower in his garden. To get this project finished on time, he opted for the cheaper half drawn or seven colors technique. This way, huge areas could be decorated with colorful tiles. Only three of the royal palaces of Isfahan survived. They included a number of kiosks, one of which is the Chihil Sutun, or 40 columns, from the early 17th century. These kiosks were surrounded by gardens and water features. The Chihil Sutun was intended to accommodate distinguished guests who were welcomed by a spectacular talar, or portico, with tall wooden columns. The interior still features wall paintings from the period showing delightful scenes of country life in a very stylized manner. The principal room shows a large painting in which Shah Tahmasp is receiving great mogul Humayun in exile. This work is designed to impress the visitor. It is influenced by European history painting, especially in its rendition of space. Here, the idiom of Persian miniatures was enlarged to an enormous scale. Compared to its European predecessors, the rendition of space and the figure arrangement seems clumsy and at times comical. But let's keep in mind that this type of painting, in essence a large history painting, was unknown in the Islamic world and is a testament to the attempt to branch out into unknown territories. Painting on ceramic surfaces were much more common in this area. A wonderful example would be this decorative panel from the 17th century, today in the Victoria and Albert Museum in London. It is painted and glazed fritware. Figurative painting was relatively new to the Islamic tradition and heavily influenced by European examples. Poses and facial expressions of the figures are quite artificial and heavily influenced by 15th century miniatures. Among the bridges of Isfahan, the Poe Kaju from 1641 to 1666 is the most elaborate, designed to be crossed for the pleasure rather than the necessity of doing so. It connected two gardens with one another and can be seen as an elegant street suspended over water. Massive piers and arches make this possible. It is divided into three sections, the middle one for vehicles and two footpaths. The central pavilion has an iwan overlooking the river. It was intended for meetings and relaxation. A further passage is possible at water level, at the foot of the piers. This area was reserved for various artisan workshops. The ceramic decoration evokes the color of the river and the sky. After the death of Shah Abbas I in 1627, 
Persian architecture began a slow decline. One exception would be the Madrasa i Madari Shah, the Shah's mother's madrasa, from 1706 to 1714. This large complex included not only a madrasa but also a mosque and a han, which was financing the maintenance of the complex. This ensemble was erected by the last of the Safavids, Hussein I, in honor of his mother. It represents a late high water mark of Persian architecture, with an elegant dome next to a pair of sophisticated minarets. The elegant wall coverings mix shades of gold and green with occasional blue touches. It is the last great work of Persian Safavid architecture. <laughs>